Hello everyone, it's Holly. Um, I have been sick for the past couple of days, so I apologize for the delay. Um, but we are back with um, the presentation that I came to you with the other day about 8 Metamorphous H. And we are going to continue with the study that the Lord has me delve into. Um, and what you see right here on this page is the lens. A lot of times life is about how we look at things and the patterns that we see within our world. What makes our world our world or our universe? Um, this has to be one of my favorite pictures of all time that I've ever found. And if you see right here, you're going to see the brain cell, which is compared to the universe. And then the birth of a cell is very much like the death of a star. And if you can also look, you're going to see the, the butterfly effect. See how you have the middle partition and then you have um, the wings of the butterfly. And you also, what I see in this death of a star, I see an eight. And then also a birth of a cell, I see an eight. Um, very much compared to the eye, our eye, up close, and then the nebula of a star. So it all depends on how um, you're seeing everything and how much the Lord is allowing us to see because I believe that before it was taken away from us, our ability to see, um, he made us not remember, and I believe that it was for a reason. And now I believe that the middle wall has been taken down and that he is allowing us to see and remember how to keep the Sabbath holy. And we'll get into more of that in just a minute. Um, but also, this is an image that I found, and let me just explain something to you. The reason why it takes me so long to actually put these videos together is because when I do a presentation, I, when he gives me words or um, different things to actually study about and to learn about, he gives them to me in images. So when I have an image in my head, I will go to Google and I will put in the words or the phrases that he's given me and I will search and search and search until I get the perfect picture that is actually depicting the image that he's putting in inside my head. So in a sense, you can say that I am definitely a right brain thinker because I, um, I have to have pictures in order to see. And then once I find the pictures, then I go to the left side of my brain and then begin to read. So my thinking goes from one to the other. And, and this also signifies the whole in which, which he's allowing us to finally see. And this can intertwine with different aspects of learning. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. And I just want to recap some of the things that we discussed in 8 Metamorphous H, which we started talking about the Great Divide and what was taking place in that divide. Um, we talked about the right brain and the left brain and the different attributes to both sides of the brain and how we actually think and see and learn and um, contemplate different um, circumstances in our lives or how we deal with things um, and which side of the brain that we use in order to solve equations or problems. One thing that I didn't particularly delve into which was the male and the female aspect and we are going to talk a little bit more about this but there's a couple of things I want to show you to actually come out and just say what I want to say. Um, because we have to remember that our way of thinking is completely different now. The Spirit is filling us with uh, new revelation. And the one thing that, in order for us to see this revelation, is that what we've been taught all of our years of living has to be thrown out. It has to completely be emptied of us. Because He's not going to fill us with new wine or new wisdom and knowledge and understanding if we don't empty out what we've been taught by man to begin with. So when we start coming into this spirit, and this goes for anybody, especially those of you that are just starting to wake up and starting to see and to remember some of these things that he's allowing us to see right now, is that we have to have an open mind about everything because what is being taught to us in the spirit is nothing compared to what's being taught in the world. And almost in a sense, what's being taught in the world is contradictory or opposite of what is the Spirit is teaching. And, and I don't know if this is the 
the negative spirit that's trying to go against the positive spirit. But we are going to see that the negative and the positive play a very vi vital role within the whole picture. So before we get to one side, we have to see the other side, even if it's bad. So keep that in mind. Um, we talked extensively about the number eight, as we still will throughout this whole series. We also spoke about 88 and the butterfly effect and um, opposite views from what we thought was true. Um, then we talked about the nymphalade butterfly, which he, the, that type of butterfly had an 88 on, on its wings. We talked about complete metamorphosis, dorsal, ventral. We spoke about the letters on the wings about how the butterflies actually contain letters on their wings. And if that doesn't show you that our God is just miraculous, uh, there's many more things that can t talk about this, but we know that he is miraculous and he is doing a miraculous thing right now. Um, we spoke about incomplete metamorphosis, which is um, not completely going through a full metamorphosis where it changes from one aspect to another. And that nymph plays a big role in the incomplete metamorphosis. Uh, we spoke about the Ayas, which is a young hawk, and we talked about sun, solar, circle. We also spoke about circumcision. We talked about part, part, whole, or whole, part, part, and we're going to see today that um, there's actually another side to this that I didn't mention before. We spoke about the seventh day rest, where we rest from doing work once through six days, we do our own work, but on the seventh day, we rest. And we understand that the Lord is the deciding factor of what's taking place in our lives. And we rest. We let him do the work because he is the power source that is behind everything and anything in this world. And then also, we spoke a little bit about the eighth day resurrection, but we're going to talk about that more extensively tonight. Um, and then we spoke, we saw a couple of chapters, Genesis, Luke, Romans, and Colossians. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, um, definitely look more at the H. We'll begin connecting the H to the H. Um, some of the aspects we're going to talk about is on, off. We're going to see some self. We're going to talk about the path of time. We're going to talk about the two witnesses, fractals, the beast, and two horns. So, with no further ado, we'll move to the next slide. So, before we talked about the Great Divide is where we're starting to see the good and the bad, the left and the right, the um, just completely two opposite parts. So can we go from part, part, whole? Well, if you think about part, part, whole, you're thinking about a lineage of time where you're going from in 1956, 1987, 2014, you know, you're, you're going in a straight path and then you to the end, you can look back and see all the, the, the whole picture. But is that really how God's time works? I don't believe it does. Um, so, is it go from, we see the whole picture, and then we go down to the part? Very possibly. But, I think more of a better aspect that we can actually say that time takes place is part, whole, and then part. And I'm going to show you exactly how I've come up with this revelation, or how he showed me to come to this revelation. Um, so when we get the part, part, and the whole, or the whole part, whole, or part, whole, part, we get the two becomes one. And that one is very important in, in how the whole picture comes together. Um, in Revelation, it talks about three and a half days, and in Daniel it talks about three and a half days and three and a half days, which gives you your seventh day rest. Um, and I put out to the side that four times seven equals 28, because those of you that have been with me for a while know that the Lord at the beginning of my walk showed me the number 28, which has derived to 88, 28, just all kinds of different combinations, but has led me to exactly where he wants me right now, where that's talking about the eighth day res resurrection. And some of the things that he's brought to my attention is before it was the 28, then it went to the 8, then he went, he showed me two eight. So what is 8? If you put an 8 in a mirror, what are you going to get? It's going to get an 88. So that mirror is very important. And that mirror is also what helps us see the part part to the whole. 
So within each of us, what does that eight mirrored show each of us? Well, you got your old versus the new contradictory spirits, both housed within us. And we're going to see exactly how those spirits take place. But first, I'm going to show you a couple of things before we get there. Um, when I started looking up eight, and this has been going on for two years that I've researched about eight or 88. Um, but one of the things that is very important that he showed me was eight is the base of the octal number system, which is mostly used with computers. And if you look here on this image right here, you have this eight. Uh, look at the pattern that you have, 0 equals 0. This is a binary or bits you have. Um, so in the octal, one digit represents three bits. In modern com computers, a byte is a grouping of eight bits, also called an, called an octet. octet. So it's, e it's either on or it's off. One is on and zero is off. And instead of using decimals, the ten-digit decimal in that should be a bell ringer for some of you. Ten. Um, think about the beast. Ten. Um, so instead of using the ten digit where you have decimals, this is a binary system where you have only two possible values, which is on and off. And this is going to play a vital role in, in everything that we're studying. But I thought this was very interesting when I started researching this is that once you get down to eight, well, let me go back up. So one is just a one, and then you add a zero for the two, and the the tens place you have a one, and then the ones place you have a zero. Um, three is one one, and then four goes to one hundred. You add um, that fourth that fourth number. You add another uh, space, and then all the way down to eight, you get a thousand, which we know that's what's being said in his word about the thousand year reign and um, this, this I think is very important to some of you that know the scripture and, and if you if you don't know the scripture guys I don't want to give you everything because what I want you to do is I want you to go and research and eat the little book which means to read it you eat the little book and I would recommend the, the uh, King James Bible um, and I have my own reasoning for that but I believe that there is only one Bible out there that's true and correct. And from what I've learned and studied, it all comes true back to the KJV. So, with that said, do a Bible research on thousand years and, and read every single verse that you come to where it speaks about the thousand years. And let the Spirit teach you what He's taught me. Okay? So, let's go on. Okay, so I want to talk about... In the Bible, this is something that he showed me from the very beginning. And the more I spoke about this, the more people would, no, that's not right, that's not right, that's, that can't be it, that can't be it. And I didn't give up on the fact that I knew that the Spirit taught me this. And he's still showing me the same things today. And I'm going to show you what he showed me. And if you think about the Old Testament, the main thing that comes out of the Old Testament well, I shouldn't say the main thing, but the one greatest thing that comes out of the Old Testament from God to man is the commandments, the Ten Commandments. Okay? And then you have in the New Testament, you have Jesus. And he was the Son of God. And what he taught us was to have faith in the prophecy or faith in the prophet. So there's two totally different sides to this. And I'm going to come back to this in just a second, but if you look on the left-hand side, you have death, and then on the right-hand side, you have life, or you're alive. Another aspect, if you look at the cross right here, you have the horizontal line. This represents death. This is like you're dying. You're laid out, but when you come to life, you're resurrected. You are vertical. You're standing back up, and then you have 3.5 and 3.5, so what does that equal? It equals seven. So your seventh day rest comes when you have been resurrect, uh, resurrected or when you've gone through your resurrection, which is considered your eighth day. And that's why in the, the Bible it talks about you have your seventh day and then suddenly 
you, you come into a different light. Because between that seventh day and that eighth day, it goes quick. It goes really quick. So, even though you have your resurrection, what takes place between the left side and the right side? Well, you, you just don't see both sides anymore. You see the whole picture. And what I mean the whole picture is that the, you have faith in Jesus Christ. And you have faith in God to be able to follow the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are, it teaches us exactly how to love. And Jesus even taught us this. He told us that, no, I didn't, I'm not doing away with my Father's commandments. How do you love? How do you love others? Well, you don't kill them. You don't steal from them. You don't, you're not jealous. You shouldn't be jealous of them. Um, you should not commit adultery. You shouldn't, all these things that you should not do. That is pure love. Before I came into the Spirit, it wasn't anything for me to lie. I mean, watch TV and see how much they lie. Now when I watch very little of TV, because I don't have time for it, because I'm studying all the time for this, which is what I love and have a passion for now. But before I was awakened, I would watch TV all the time, just like the average person that isn't in the Spirit. And, you know, somebody would lie, and it was... Just like nothing. And that's how people go about every day. They think that lying is just, oh, that's, that's just what we do. No, it's not. It shouldn't be. When you come into the Spirit, you know automatically that you cannot do that. It, 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 it should cringe your spirit even when you hear somebody lie. And it does. And it should. And that's where you get the new person in who we are. So that resurrection, that eighth day, is very powerful. Now, when all this began with me, I was shown 28. But there was something else that I was shown. It was um, it was the Spirit. And I was way back away from the world. And he was standing over the, the world. I mean, he was huge compared to the world. Um, and he took his foot and he, well, before he took his foot, he took his hands and he cupped around his mouth and he screamed into the earth. And it, and it scared me. I don't want to really get into this because you can actually go back to one of my videos where I talk about this. Um, but one of the things that he did was he took his foot and he slammed it down on earth. And this has been in, evolved, or everything that I've been studying has revolved around Revelations 10. And I just want to go over a couple of verses because I'm going to tie everything, how he's been tying everything, even just recently, to show me these things. So in Revelations 10, the first verse, verse says, and I saw a mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. So, the cloud and the head is synonymous and it's within the same sentence. So, I want you to think of your brain and the clouds in the sky like the fragments of your brain. Okay? And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. The two pillars represent that divide. So... When that fire, the Holy Spirit comes down upon you, immediately your eyes are opened up. And you know that what you were in the past cannot happen or take place anymore. I mean, that's what he instantly does for you. And like I've said numerous times, this did not happen in a church. Yes, I gave my, Lord, uh, my life to the Lord 10 years or so prior or 12 years so prior before I truly called out on the Lord within the depths of my soul and hurting within myself and in the darkness of the night was down on all fours and called out for him and when he heard me and he didn't hear my words he heard my heart he heard, he felt my hurt my heart hurting and when he came down and opened those eyes and took away the eye salve that was upon my eyes and helped me instantly remember what what I could do with him then that fire of the Holy Spirit opened up and showed me that right from wrong instantly. And I knew what I had to do. And um, so in the second verse, he said, And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Which the open book signifies the two halves. Because when you have a book, it's open. You have two halves. You have the right side and you have the left side. You also... What we see here is his right foot was upon the scene, his left foot was, was upon the earth. Um, what he's shown me in the past, and what he still shows me, is that earth, we are the new earth. 
we actually contain the new heaven, which is in our head. And if you see, verse 1 and verse 2 is very, very close and very similar. So ask, go, to, go to the Lord in all things and ask him if what I speak of is true. I don't want you to follow me. I want you only to follow the Spirit. So um, anyway, so in, in verse 3 it says, And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roared. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voice. The lion, which he showed me recently, was the lying. It has to stop. What these eunuchs that have taught other eunuchs or pastors and preachers, and I wouldn't just say them. I would say more or less just anyone that is teaching that man can bring down the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's not true. It's not how it happens. So this lying has to stop. It ha it's. It, it is stopped, actually. It, it will stop completely because when the eunuchs that he's called completely come together and he's bringing us together because we're all speaking the same things and, and, and it's miraculous how exactly we're speaking the same things, but we're speaking them in the own images that he's teaching us through, but they're all merging back together because we are of one mind. Um, and then also the seven thunders uttered their voices. So again, our seventh day, seventh day is the, is the pillars. It's the great divide. So it's the right from the wrong, the left from the right, the old from the new. Okay. So what happens after this great divide? Well, if you look right here, let's go down to verse four and I'm going to talk about this image right here in just a minute. But verse four says, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. So one of the things that he showed me very recently, like yesterday, and I'm not really sure about everything and how this works, but um, if you think about our, our cells within our blood, we have red blood cells, we have white blood cells, but we have a third type of cell that... Um, it is the smallest within the blood, but this cell is what combines or connects the two. We, as you know, the red blood cell is red and the white is white, but the thrombus is clear. The red blood cells carry oxygen and food particles or the energy from the um, from the food throughout our body, and the white blood cells fight infection, which I thought was so uh, ironic, considering the last few days I've been very sick with a um, bad stomach virus, and um, I believe that this is why, I and mean, he was trying to show me, because he knew that I would research it, and um, so this thrombus, when you have a scab, this thrombus will actually connect with the other cells and will heal up that wound. So without that thrombus, we would be free bleeders. We would bleed to death. Um, so like I said, he's just taught me with, about this. So I'm going to learn a little bit more about this and come back to you with this. Um, I didn't really want to make this without knowing a little bit more about this, but I, I wanted to get this out there too and come back to this because I know that he's going to show me more with this, but whenever he was showing me about the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the thrombus, um, he was also showing me the connect, how the middle partition, which is that thrombus, where it brings it all together, okay? Um, so right here in this section, you can have the red blood cells and the white blood cells, and this thrombus is what the, the gooey, clear um, cells that, that combine them. Okay, um, so here's an image of the actual white blood cells and the red blood cells, and in the thrombus or the platelet is barely talked about um, as being a part of the the blood cells, and I wonder why that is. I wonder what why they're not speaking about the platelet because its job is is very 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 important. Um, and I'd like to go on with verse five of Revelation chapter ten. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. And that's kind of like what 
the the platelets and how it is combining the the blood to stay with impact in within us. Um, and then also I thought was very very ironic is the leukocyte or lukewarm is what he was showing me. Even though the white blood cells do fight the infection, um, it's it's kind of, I want to say, being lukewarm is just having a band-aid but not fixing the wound. What's going to fix the wound is the platelets, and the platelets is what's going to stop that bleeding. Okay, we can kind of compare this. We could say the leukocytes is like the, the New Testament. People say that they have Jesus, but do they really? Are they really changed? Are they really converted to the spirits where, where they have complete faith in Christ in that they can abide and, and follow the Ten Commandments? Okay? Um, so we have time no longer. How do you, and this was not supposed to happen like this because I was going to show you this was going to fly in this. Let me just say that this right here represents, I was going to ask you how this picture represents time. Well, again, we see the lineage time where you have a starting point right here, and then it goes on straight. And then you have another time that goes, say, up and down. But the one thing that we should be seeing is the whole picture. We shouldn't just be seeing the horizon right here or the, the line that's separating the water from the sky. We shouldn't just be seeing the sky, and we just shouldn't be just seeing the water. We need to see the whole picture. So with that said, the wholeness of the whole picture is what brings it all together. So there's no more time to see forwards and backwards and up and down. We need to start seeing all of it, everything. Bring the two halves together. Let them mirror each other and understand how that mirror is so important for us to see the whole picture. So um, verse 6 says, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. This is actually verse 6 through 7. Um, so, once we get to that seventh day, and we know, we see the great divide, then what comes after that? Because he's telling us that he's going to finish this out with his prophets, and how do people become his prophets? Well, they hear the Spirit, and they teach from what the Spirit's teaching them, okay? So, symmetry. Let's look at symmetry for a second. If you take your hand, and you... Look at one hand, your phalanges, which are the sections of your fingers, the phalanges. You have 14 on each hand. When they come together, put one hand up to the other hand, like you're praying. Then you're going to have 28 phalanges. And the same goes with your feet, which is 28. Um, and I want to look at two, look at a verse right here. This is something that two years ago, which... I researched 28 in the Bible, and this is something that he showed me about the length of the curtain. So one length, one curtain shall be 8 and 28 cubits, and the breadth of one curtain, 4 cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have one measure. So if we look at the body, it's complete symmetry. Our legs are symmetrical to the other leg, our arm is symmetrical to the other leg, our eye we have a right ear and a left ear, our brain, everything is symmetrical. So let's look at Ezekiel. It says the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So why is he teaching us about this symmetry? Why? Well, because it plays a big important role, because what's within us is with outside of us. It's on the outside of us also. And they're all equal. And what is he trying to show us? Let's see. So, if we take a look at our bodies and we cut the, um, we have a middle section and we cut 
one half of our body one way and one half of our body the other way. We have a dorsal and a ventral, just like we saw in the, the butterfly. Um, we have four different quadrants or different sections of that body. And think about the length and the, the breadth and everything that the word talks about. Um, and you're going to start seeing this picture come together. I do not study the chakras that much, but I do know that the chakras do play an important role. Um, this shape right here, I've, he's shown me, I've, I've drawn it before, he showed me how the beginning of time, how his time and his word came about with this shape and this image, and it plays a very important role. Um, and he's also shown us right here, Earth, we have an Earth star. We have body of light, holographic octahedron, which is the diamond. The diamond, guess what? The diamond has eight faces. Eight faces. The cube has eight vertices, which is eight endpoints. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you that in just a second, too. So this is talking about the actual dimensions. Your soul star, your galactic center, your universal gateway, and the galactic center, which I'm going to actually try in the attempt to connect all this together, the way he's connected it for me. Um, so let's look at this. This is a lineage. This is time moving from part, part to whole. So if we go from part, part to whole, then you're going to see that we have 3.5, 3.5, and we have the seventh day rest. Mind, body, get, becomes the soul. Father, son, spirit. Father, mother, you get son, commandments which is in the Old Testament, the prophets in the New Testament, you have your everlasting God or the Holy Spirit. You have male, female, one body. I said that we were going to speak about those. Um, in your studies and what the Spirit brings to you, that you're going to come into the concept of the male and the female are housed within each of us. We have a male spirit and a female spirit. And when the, those two spirits come together, we have a oneness taking place. Um, this is something you need to pray about, and this is something you need to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. I, no man can teach anybody this. I can tell you all I want till I'm blue in the face, but it's not going to come until it comes when the Holy Spirit teaches you. So I pray that you pray about this. Um, so you have the flesh, and when you have the Spirit, it gives you the Holy Spirit. The whole Spirit. Um, and then you're Dead, made alive, resurrection and holiness. Eight, you get the, another eight, gives you 88. I'm just trying to show you how the parts, the parts become the whole. And if this is the way that we need to look at everything. So in a circle, you have 180 degrees and 180 degrees, which gives you the 360 degree circle. Old Testament, New Testament, one word, one God, one universe, one soul, all of it. Um, you have left, right, and whole or holy. Okay, let's look at the next slide. This is what I was seeing how it all came together for me. Because when I got the parts, some of the parts, then I got the, another part, but it wasn't in a lineage fashion. It was more of a part. I started seeing the whole picture, but then I had to connect that other part together. So it's kind of like more of a pyramid effect. You start out as the basis, and then you go up. So I'm not going to go over every single one of these again, but just know that it, to me, this is the way that the Lord was showing me. It was part, whole, part, because when you take your hands and you, and you bring them together and you start at the base of your hands and you work them together, as, as in you're bringing your hands together like you're praying, then you're coming together as one, that, that one side and that other side coming together and it's creating that, that whole picture. So that's the way that we need to look at this. We need to look at it as those two parts coming together. And that Old Testament and that New Testament is, is the key, bringing them together. Because it's all his word. All of it is important. Everything is important to make that wholeness or that one spirit. Okay, so this is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established, which is in 2 Corinthians 13.1. Look at this. This is a magnification. In three days, the, 
this is what takes place within a human body when you have a male and a female sex cell come together. What do you get? You get the egg of life. It's the, there's eight cells. It divides three day old human embryos. So that third day we get eight cells. This is what I would even say when you have when you first start out with that male and that female sex cell, what do you get? You get the big bang per to say or or per se, should I say. It, once that male and that female sex cell comes together, then it explosion happens. It's it's the universe created. It's 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 life. And that life takes place within each of us are made, we're made from that explosion. So, let's start seeing this as the bigger picture. What happens when this all comes together? You're going to get the whole creation. You're going to get the whole picture. And that's what I plan to do and, and plan to helpfully, hopefully show each and every one of you that this is bigger than us. This is much bigger than us, but it's connecting all of it back together to us. So the whole becomes parts and the parts become whole until you get the whole absolute picture of it all. Okay, I'll come back to you in another video and I love you guys and just pray about this and just any questions that you have, ask the Lord to show you if it's true or not. And um, thank you guys for just witnessing together and, and being his mouthpieces and his trumpets for, for these last days. Peace and love.